The moon rotates around the Earth at about the same speed as it does around its axis. That's why we can only see one side of it. That means that 41% of its surface hasn't been explored yet. This fact surprises many people, as we're used to thinking that we know everything about all things in the world, while even our own planet remains a mystery to us. For example, Antarctica, which is no less mysterious to us than the lunar surface. Or how about the inexplicable ice domes? Or a giant face right in the midst of snow valleys? Or a crater the size of the state of Colorado? The land of eternal frost keeps its secrets carefully. But we're gonna raise the secret curtain right now and tell you all about the recent discoveries in Antarctica which will make blood run cold in your veins. What if we tell you that underneath the thick layer of ice and permafrost, mysterious creatures live? Sound improbable? But scientists have already found something interesting right here beneath this dome. Yes, Antarctica is almost entirely covered with glaciers, but underneath them there is conventional terrain and even some active volcanoes. Recently, the scientists discovered that the heat from one of the volcanoes has melted the glacier, but it wasn't due to a one-time eruption, rather a continuous heat radiation that has been occurring for so long that it led to formation of warm caves under the ice. These caves under the ice dome are located on the Erebus Mountain on the island of Rosa. And it's not just a single big cave, we're talking about a whole labyrinth of corridors and rooms inside the cave. They were created by the stream that rises up from the volcano. Scientists believe that there could be some form of life deep down in these caves. It can get heat from the volcano, water from the ice, and sunlight coming down through the glacier. After all, Antarctica is exposed to an intense solar radiation. Researchers have found these perfectly round areas just recently, so they haven't had a chance to study them just yet. But they assume that there might as well exist an ecosystem, a closed but a diverse one. Do you remember those sci-fi movies about dinosaurs that survived hidden in ice? There could be something similar in this case. Experts have already discovered DNA traces which they are not able to identify. This means that creatures unknown to biologists live under the Antarctica ice caps. What kind of organisms do you think can dwell in this environment? However, living creatures hidden under the ice are not the strangest mystery of Antarctica. The thing is, this continent, because of its remoteness and cold, seems not just frozen in ice, but in time as well. Can anything interesting happen in a place with almost no life in it? As it turns out, it can. Moreover, sometimes Antarctica shows us something not only new and unexplainable, but frighteningly large as well. For example, the giant face which was spotted on Google Earth on the satellite images of Antarctica. It's a mountain-sized silhouette of either a human or an alien, and it resembles a fragment of a statue that appeared from under the snow and ice. A mouth, nose, and a pair of eyes are clearly visible on this scary find. Perhaps those are ruins of a civilization that once existed and that had contact with aliens. Or maybe it's just a trick of Mother Nature and what we see is just a play of snow, wind, and frost. Actually, the experts suppose that the gigantic face is really just a massive snow crust, which happens to look so bizarre. But what you can argue is the appearance of huge holes in the ice the size of South Carolina or Colorado states. The mysterious hole was first discovered in 2016. It was discovered again in 2017. Initially, it had an area of 3,700 square miles, or 9,600 square kilometers. But gradually, it grew into a gigantic 30,000 square miles, or 78,000 square kilometers. The mysterious spot appeared in the ice-free part of the ocean right in the middle of the icy desert. So why did this happen? For almost half a century, scientists could not explain the nature of these giant holes, called polinias, from a Russian word that means an ice hole. It was only in 2019 that the scientists from the University of Washington gained the support of NASA in their study of the strange formations in ice using satellites. It turned out that due to the Earth's climate change, such giant holes in Antarctica will appear more and more often. The reason for this is that the cold waters of the ocean under the ice get mixed with the warm currents. The warm water then rises up and melts the ice with lightning speed. Put simply, a hole the size of an American state appeared in 3, 2, one, well, really quickly. Why does it happen so fast? The reason is the Mod Rise Plateau with a massive seamount, a real underwater Everest. This seamount is situated close to these holes, and its shape and topography enhance the flow of the warm water toward the surface. It creates not just a current, but something more like a powerful hose stream that washes away the cold ice. 
However, although glaciers stretch far beyond the Antarctic continent, we should remember that under the most part of the ice, there is land. Unlike the North Pole, the South Pole is not just a frozen ocean, but a continent under glaciers. These glaciers weigh hundreds of thousands of tons. All this mass has been pressing the land down for millions of years. No wonder that the lowest land point on the planet was found here. The find was made by a team of researchers directed by scientists from the University of California, Irvine. They found a canyon that was particularly affected by the ice pressure. This place is located under the Denman Glacier in East Antarctica. Its depth is stunning, 2.1 miles or 3.4 kilometers below sea level. In comparison, New York, which is situated on a group of islands off the ocean coast and therefore obviously in the lowland, is located at an altitude of 32 feet or 10 meters above sea level. Denver, which is considered to be one of the largest mountain cities in the United States, is located at an altitude of a mile or 1.6 kilometers above sea level. Given that the minimum thickness of the ocean crust varies between 3.1 to 4.3 miles, or 5 to 7 kilometers, we can say that the glacier has pressed the mainland into the mantle of the planet almost halfway. Can you imagine the time it takes to push a whole valley so deep down? After all, Antarctica is the place where you can really learn a lot about the past of our planet. For example, everyone knows that about 65 million years ago, most dinosaurs became extinct. Thanks to that, mammals and birds got free space for themselves, a chance for growth. But what species lived in that period? Who took the place of the dinosaurs after their disappearance? Who became the most dangerous and cunning predator after the extinction of Tyrannosauruses? Scientists exploring Antarctica have found out. You wouldn't believe this, it turns out that for hundreds of thousands of years, the dominant predators in the southern hemisphere of the planet, the largest and most formidable carnivores were the penguins. They were distant relatives of the contemporary penguins, and they were faster, more aggressive, and large. This ancient penguin was the height of a human and weighed about 265 pounds, or 120 kilograms. And it wasn't fat because the climate was mild, subtropical, and there was no real need to protect oneself from the cold, but muscles. Their bodies were slightly different from those of contemporary birds. They had stronger legs and body proportions resembling those of an albatross. Actually, petrels and albatrosses are their closest relatives. The skeletons of these birds were found on the islands of the mainland of Antarctica. It turns out that they lived about 60 to 62 million years ago, so we can suppose that these birds lost their ability to fly and became waterfowl precisely because the dinosaurs freed a niche for them to hunt. Uh, by the way, speaking of dinosaurs, it's the remains of the ancient lizard called Lephosaurus that confirmed the theory of supercontinents that existed tens and hundreds of millions of years ago. First of all, the remains of Lephosauruses were also found on other continents besides Antarctica, while it was never able to swim. Secondly, during an archaeological expedition in Antarctica, a skeleton of a cynodont reptile was found. Similar remains have also been found in South America and India. That's why the scientists believe that Antarctica was once connected to other parts of the world, South America, India, Africa, and Australia. And there were ancient supercontinents called Gondwana and Laurasia. In addition, the climate in Antarctica was much warmer. Densely inhabited subtropical and even tropical forests were growing there, and also it was slightly closer to the equator in the southwest of the Pacific Ocean. But Antarctica surprises us not only with discoveries of the past, but also of present times. For example, under the ice in West Antarctica, geologists and scientists from NASA found a previously unknown huge underground lake. It's just that instead of water, it's filled with magma. The thing is that on the land of Marie Bird, there is a number of active mini volcanoes. They heat this territory with about the same intensity as the Yellowstone supervolcanoes would. Remarkably, there are no breaks in the crust or any other reasons for the volcanoes to exist there. Scientists believe that the so-called plume is located there, a giant mushroom-shaped structure that arises from the magma to the surface of the planet. Plumes consist of a lightweight and hot substance. They provoke the appearance of volcanoes under the glaciers. However, these volcanoes are not mountain-shaped. Rather, they are simply erupting holes in the ground under the glaciers. Because of this, the ice caps of Antarctica melt three times faster over the land of Marie Bird than over any other area. However, all these discoveries and puzzles, no matter how interesting they are, usually relate to Antarctica itself, a place that seems to be a separate world to the majority of people. Now get ready for a real shock, because Antarctica has contributed to the exploration of outer space and the discovery of extraterrestrial life. Did you think it was necessary to build spacecrafts to successfully search for aliens? Not at all. 
1984, the Allen Hills meteorite, ALH84001, was found in Antarctica, and all these decades, it's been researched. According to the very first analyses, scientists have discovered that it wasn't just a piece of rock wandering around in space that was once pulled to Earth, this meteorite is a fragment of Mars. What could happen to the red planet that made its peace travel such a long stretch? After all, the average distance between the planets is about 140 million miles, or 225 million kilometers, and can fluctuate significantly when they approach or move away from each other while rotating around the Sun. Of course, some of you may doubt that this stone is from Mars, but it's a proven fact. First of all, the composition of the soil is identical to the Martian rock samples that are available. Secondly, there are inclusions of isotopes that fully correspond to those in the atmosphere of this planet. But this is not the most important discovery. Fossil remains of ancient bacteria were found in the depths of the rock. Moreover, it's still unknown whether these bacteria are terrestrial or Martian. The fact that the fossil remains of bacteria in the stone are similar to microorganisms of the Earth speaks in favor of the first theory, because it means that water was necessary for their existence. The liquid that now remains on Mars is similar in composition to the antifreeze liquid. Could even a small amount of bacteria survive on it? On the other hand, how could terrestrial bacteria get in the depths of the meteorite? Microorganisms are not very likely to be stubbornly penetrating a stone that fell billions of years ago. What do you think? Please let us know in the comments below. Hit the like button and be sure to subscribe to our channel.